Meet Jack Zostak. He's a biochemist at Harvard and the Massachusetts Hospital. I sat down with him in his office at the hospital. He's surrounded by a beautiful lab. And he's also the recipient of the 2009 Nobel Prize for Medicine. And he's just concerned, obsessed with the origin of life. How did the chemistry get together to form the first life? And here's some articles about him and an edited volume, The Origins of Life. Let's hear what he has to say about Are We Alone? Are we alone in the universe? <laughs> That's what we'd like to find out, right? I mean, we have different approaches. The astronomers are looking directly and we're trying to figure out from uh, lab work, you know, how likely it is that there could be life out there, elsewhere. You got a Nobel Prize for telomere research, I think. Right. Is that right? Yeah. So, uh, and you, I guess, switch telomeres is something that only eukaryotes have, and now you're, I guess, obsessed with prokaryotes. So what qualifies no, you I'm, as... I'm, I'm obsessed with the origin of life, which well, is that's long... Well, pro, that's prokaryotes, not eukaryotes. No, right? it depends how you define prokaryotes. Prokaryotes gives... The, I mean, that's a term used for... Uh, a, a collection of, of modern uh, microbes, both the bacteria, the eubacteria, and the archaea are lumped together as prokaryotes. It's a term that a lot of evolutionary people don't really like mm -hmm. because they don't have necessarily, they're not a clade, right? right? It's like invertebrates or something. Yeah, right. So uh, anyway, I'm not really uh, focused on on aspects of modern biology. I'm interested in that transition from complicated chemistry to the really simplest beginnings of biology. We're trying to understand how life emerged from the chemistry of the early Earth by just studying that kind of chemistry and seeing if we can you know, either rule out uh, ideas or pathways that, that you know, simply don't work? Or you know, can we identify a series of steps that would make the whole pathway easy? If you want to look for the simplest, earliest starting points, to me, um, fatty acids make the most sense. I, you know, I wouldn't rule out other possibilities. Mm -hmm. But just uh, ester-linked fatty acids, well, just fatty acids, not linked to anything, oh. is what you can make really primitive membranes out of. And they have all the right kinds of properties for primitive cells. How about, are you trying to simulate or emulate an environment in which are the best candidates for the origin of life, like a hydrothermal vent or a pool, a, I don't know, a tidal pool or something, a warm little pond? I don't hear you talk in that language. Right, well, I think we're not quite at that level yet. I mean, I mean we're, we're, we're sort of pushing up against that. I mean, we, we have a, a, a geochemical, geophysical scenario that, that we like, that we think is consistent with what we've learned about membrane and RNA behavior. Oh, what is that? What is that? It's basically uh, a, an environment uh, kind of like, like Yellowstone Lake, mm -hmm. uh, a freshwater surface lake, but, but with hydrothermal circulation, uh -huh. you know, water being circulated through, mm -hmm. through the rocks, um, you know, bringing up ions and having, giving, you know, streams of hot water coming out of vents, right. like you have in, in, in Yellowstone. Ions. Uh, I think that kind of environment where you could accumulate organic materials to high concentrations and where you could have fluctuations in temperature and you'd have currents to move things around, I think that's a really attractive idea for, for the kind of model we're thinking about. You know, if we can actually show from our lab experiments that all the steps on this pathway from chemistry to life and, and on up to more complicated life, if, if, if if there's a connected pathway where all the steps are easy, then I would say, yeah, there's going to be life in lots and lots of places out there. If in doing these experiments we say, oh, here's a step that looks really, really hard. Maybe it would take a very, very special environment or uh, some event of very low probability. Then the conclusion might be different, right? The conclusion might be there's only life in a few places, or maybe in the extreme, only here. But we won't know the answer to that until either we have a complete pathway from lab experiments, or one of our astronomer friends actually gets convincing evidence of an independent origin of life somewhere else. If they get an independent origin of life by finding life in some exoplanet, we will then be totally convinced when we go back into the lab that there's an easy pathway, and so we should work, you know, even we should be even more confident that our experiments will work out. So what kind of aliens would you like to find with your emotional side? 
<laughs> well, you know, I'm a big uh, Star Trek fan, so oh, that'd yeah. be awesome, right? <laughs> you find <laughs> Captain uh, Kirk. Go and have Spock. a drink in the bar with uh, a bunch of different aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a big, you're a big Star Trek fan. <laughs> I see. So uh, all the different life forms they have, uh, there are many different types of life forms that these That's Hollywood right. producers have thought of, <laughs> <laughs> and you just enjoy. You're entertained by them, of or course. do you take any of them seriously enough? No, to, no, no, of course not. Right? Of course I mean, not. We're, you know, we're we're working at a much simpler level. So you know, I'd be ecstatic if we can, uh, you know, get some convincing biosignatures. <laughs>